Well, welcome back to uh, find out whether or not my delicate surgery skills can solve our little problem. Let's go over it one more time. This resistor is located down inside a coil, and we've got to get it out of there. So how do I plan to solve that? Well, some of you have already come up you know, with the solution, which is the same solution I had. What we're going to do, this resistor is located inside the coil, down inside the tube. For those of you who may have just tuned in, looking down inside the, to the coil on top of the chassis, <clears throat> the resistor is down here at the bottom. And man, oh man, it's hard to get at. There's the coil right there. Well, we're going to have to take the top off this sucker. It's located down in there, and then we're going to have to take this... Uh, well, I don't know if we have to take that out of there or not. That's the grid cap wire. So I think what I'll do is just leave that there temporarily. Well, we can't get to it. Let's look at this logically. you got to have a lot of logic when you're doing something like this, okay? Come on, get some focus here. Logic says I can't get to it down from down at the top of the uh, coil. I would wind up ruining things. As a matter of fact, some of these pieces of wax on the inside of here are very loose. I'll probably have to chip some of it off and put put more liquid tape like this that I put on there to reinforce what was already chipped off and we can't get to the resistor from the bottom either so what do we do we can't get it from the top we can't get it from the bottom guess what we'll have to get it from in between yes we will it's time to rip and tear folks I'll tell you what, let's start our ripping and tearing by removing the nuts on these two screws right here. Now these two screws uh, come uh, from the bottom of the coil. They're connected to the bottom of the coil and then they're put down through the chassis. Now it's possible, I've been really skull braining <clears throat> this thing right here and I think we're going to have enough slack in each of these wires. Hopefully, maybe not all of them but most of them to where we can go ahead and pull that coil back up from the top enough with enough space you know once I once I take those screws out this entire let me back it up here this entire thing right here should be able to come up far enough to where I can maybe lean it over to where I can get to that resistor and once I get that thing leaned over to where I can get to that resistor I may have to wind up desoldering a wire to do it, but I'll do what I have to do. I intend to snip and snip that, that resistor out of there. Then I'll show you what we're going to do next. We're just not going to let this little resistor get the best of us. It's not going to happen. I mean, we are radio repairmen and restorers. We are going to solve this problem. And once I snip that resistor out of there here and here, I'm going to run a straight wire between the two. Just a straight wire. Well, we've almost got it. Almost got it. But there's still some things that need to be disconnected underneath. But i got to be real careful. All right. That's a very, very thin wire right there. That little thin wire. You can barely make it out here, okay? It comes out of the coil and gets down. And it just gets wrapped around right there and soldered. This is what you have to be very, very careful of, okay? Well, I had to desolder a couple of items, but if you look down in there, you can see the resistor with the lead on the right and the big thick lead on the left coming down just to the right of that screw. I can get to both of those with my cutters. I just need to be real careful, slide it up, and I want to leave some of that lead there so I can pigtail, you know, the coil method, stick a, a wire between them. It's going to take some time. Well, she's out, and here it is to prove it, okay? Nothing to it. Now, I had to disconnect the ground wire uh, in order to get the slack I needed to get this thing to come up. And I also had to remove uh, one of the, you know, that capacitor, that first capacitor that I put in. But that's nothing to it. We'll get that back on. And that's why I like these, uh, the coil method. It just slips right off. No problem at all. Our good subscriber, 
Gordon Cole. He, he watched me measure the resistance of this uh, 250,000 ohm resistor right here. And it read, you'll remember, 563,000 ohms, which was <laughs> way out of tolerance. Anyway, uh, Gordon said, you know, John, if you isolate this resistor from the circuit, maybe it'll go way down and you won't have a reading quite that high. Now, by isolating it, he meant, you know, lift one end. Well, let's take a look at what we have here. You know, I covered this once before, this exact same scenario once before in a video <clears throat> where I... Uh, I, you know, we would break the radio in one of the series I did. We would break a radio and see what happens as a result of the breakage. Well, let's, so let, let's take a look at this, you know, in the same kind of uh, light. Let's start with the top of the resistor. <clears throat> now, that goes up, goes through the coil, comes over, and it connects to the grid cap connector on the 35 tube. Now, that grid cap connector, the tube is not there, okay? It's unplugged from the socket and the grid cap connector is just dangling in midair. So there's nothing, it's not connected to anything. So let's go ahead and just kind of do that number right there. Let's see, get this thing a little steadier. Now we come down at the bottom and we'll come across and we'll go up through here. You see the connection point right there? We'll go up through here, we'll go through this coil. It goes up to the tuner. Now the tuner is not on, has not been reinstalled. It's not even there. So we'll go ahead and uh, it's just dangling again. There's just wire on top of the chassis. It goes through the chassis right here and it's just sticking out the top of the chassis so it's not connected to anything. Now we'll go through here and it'll come up from that, that point, same point. It'll come up and go through here and go up and to the grid cap here. And again, the tube is not connected. So the grid cap is just dangling in midair just like this one over here, okay? Now let's go a little bit more here. Let's uh, go up here and go to the right. It hits a capacitor. That's the first capacitor we installed right there. That's it. You know, it can't go any further. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going. Let me come along here like this. <clears throat> let's go up here. And again, another connection point. We'll come up here. We'll go through the coil. And over to another grid cap. And again, no tube in the socket, therefore the grid cap is just dangling in midair. So far we've seen nothing connected to the top of this resistor, okay? Now let me see if there's anything else. Let's come across, come across, come across, we come across, we come all the way down to the plate of the 24 tube, the ABC tube. And again, the, the tube is not in the socket, so there's no connection there, okay? There's nothing there. Now let's go back up and follow a couple of other lines here now. Let me see. We come across here like so. Is there anything else that I have to look at? Hmm. Come down, down, down. Oop, there's a connection right there before it gets to the plate. We come across to a 500,000 ohm resistor that connected into what used to be the can dome that I have removed. None of this is even here anymore. We'll be putting it back in, of course, resistor by resistor. <clears throat> but this is dangling in midair again. That's that big old fat green looking thing that I showed you earlier in the last video. And I think even in this video. Anyway, let me see if there's anything else we need to look at on the bottom. We come across, we come across, we come across. Nothing at all. Nothing that I can see. Therefore, well, what we got here now, now, let me see, comes across, comes across, no, no, that's another line altogether. All right, guess what, Gordon? This resistor, top and bottom, is connected to nothing. There's nothing at either end. <clears throat> Therefore, it is already isolated. So we don't need to disconnect one end or the other. Once again, I have my multimeter set up in the 2 million ohm scale and let's go over here I've got this the this negative uh, connected to this end of the resistor let's go ahead and touch this end of the resistor and find out what kind of reading we get it's going to be kind of touchy because there's not much there to really touch on to but here we go 564,000 ohms same exact reading okay 
Yes, it was isolated from the circuit. I hope that helps, Gordon. Well, that's it for now, folks. All I did was get the resistor out. Uh, the next video, we'll put the piece of wire back in and we'll locate a new resistor elsewhere in the chassis. So I hope you... I hope you didn't hold your breath too much on that thing. I have it anchored back in with the screws, the nuts on the bottom, so nothing happens to it between now and then. So until next time, this is John. By the way, uh, along with the wiring uh, video series we're doing right now, I'm doing a side project for myself. Yeah, it'd give me something to do, you know. Anyway, I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. I finally decided that now is the time and well, I got this little box, I bought it, Hobby Lobby. And I picked myself up a circuit board at uh, Radio Shack and put a couple of standoffs on it like that. Drilled the holes, put them in. And that will sit down there like that. And then all these parts that I put together will be going on, or not all of them, most of them. I'm not going to put all those capacitors, that's for sure. But most of them will go on that circuit board down in there. And when it's all over, I'll show you what it is. Uh, I'll show you the progress from time to time as we do each video. I'm not going to rush it, not going to hurry it. And hopefully when I get done, maybe some of you will want to build one of these yourself. It won't cost that much.